Now this video deals with reconditioned equipment, permitted and not permitted, as outlined in 220.2a and b in the NEC. And the purpose of change uh, basically states this, that it talks about equipment that can be reconditioned and equipment that cannot be. Now reviewing the illustration, the left hand side at the top, then we find equipment uh, that is permitted to be reconditioned. And the first bullet is low voltage power circuit breakers should be permitted, the, the power type circuit breakers. And then electronic uh, mechanical protective relays should be permitted to be reconditioned. But now when you go over to the Note 1, these regular circuit breakers uh, cannot be reconditioned. GFCIs can't be reconditioned. Uh, Ground fault protection equipment outlined in 230.75 uh, uh, in the NEC. And you know, particular sections in these new five articles will refer you uh, sometimes over to different sections like 230 and maybe 240 and 250 for grounding to pick up certain rules. So you, you would look at those uh, reference sections where they want you to pick up these rules. And in, of uh, course, uh, fuse holders, uh, it tells that the low voltage fuse holders, uh, the renewal type fuses, uh, they should not be reconditioned. And that's what this illustration is illustrating to the user of the code. Equipment that can be reconditioned and equipment that cannot be reconditioned. Now this illustration deals with overcurrent protection devices rated 800 amps or less. In accordance with NEC 240.4B1 through B3. Now the purpose of the change was to provide a revision that would limit the overcurrent protection device setting uh, below 800 amps. In other words, if you were over 800 amps and you'd have to have a lower setting uh, provided on the overcurrent protection device to meet this uh, rule. Now the Note 1 240.6a concerning restricted access to settings shall comply with 240.4b3. In other words, you either have to have a cover that's uh, locked or needs a tool and some way to gain access to those settings or a room that is locked and only qualified people uh, have the access. Now, note two, trip setting basically shall not exceed 800 amps in accordance with those section numbers and table number that you see there. Note three, the setting can be set to the next higher setting above the ampacity of the conductors where you do not exceed 240.4B and 240.6C. In other words, you cannot set that adjustment above uh, 800 amps. It would be set below 800 amps to comply with this requirement. Now this illustration deals with small conductors. In accordance with 240.4D3, uh, 1 and 2. Now notice the boxed in information kind of gives the rules here. And of course you see we have an alarm system uh, listed here and section numbers that uh, send you to the right sections to get more information and gives you the type of uh, devices it can supply. But the meat's right here in the boxed in blue uh, text. Title head requirements and protection of uh, conductors. And it talks about a number 14 copper clad aluminum 10 amp type conductor can be used provided all the following conditions are complied with. The first condition, number one, continuous loads do not exceed 8 amps. Two, overcurrent protection is provided by one of the following methods. A, branch circuit uh, rated uh, circuit breakers are listed and marked for uh, use for number 14 AWG or copper clad uh, conductors, copper clad aluminum type conductors to be specific. And B, branch circuits uh, rated fuses are listed and marked for use with number 14 copper clad aluminum conductors. And if that be the case, then number 14 can be used to serve as the items as you see above. But again, this uh, uh, 
this section is just dealing with small conductors and how they could be used when you terminate them to copper clad aluminum conductors. Now this illustration deals with the dwelling unit service and feeder conductors too. In accordance with uh, 240.4H, which recognizes the purpose of change where this new subsec excuse me, this new subsection was added to allow feeder conductors to be sized from section uh, 310.12 uh, and table 310.12, as well as the service conductors. The only problem here, there were some designers and installers said, yeah, you could apply this table to the service, but not to feeder conductors. So they wanted to point out that you could. For example, if you had a feeder, uh, as you see in loads, uh, right next to the, right above the dwelling unit there, and the faces were 192, the neutral was 85, and the overcurrent device was 200. Well, that, that 192 amps would require a 3 all from table 310.16 and the 75 degree column. But we could come down and for phases A and B in the calculating feeder loads for a dwelling unit, we could use two alt conductors and downsize from a three alt up to a two alt or reduce the size, however you want to put it. And if you wanted to do the calculation by 310.12 A and B, it'd just be 83% uh, of 192, that'd be uh, 159 that you would come up with. So you'd see that would be a, a possible way to do that. There would be no problem. Now, if you uh, wanted to look at your feeder circuit conductors and sub-panel, then 240.4H along with uh, 408.40 and 408.36 would do. And uh, the note right below the uh, right-hand side, bottom side of the illustration, feeder circuit conductors should be permitted to be protected against overcurrent uh, in accordance with 310.12. And that's basically what this illustration uh, is illustrating to you, how we could uh, reduce uh, from a 3 alt to a 2 alt conductor and be in compliance with the NEC. This illustration deals with listing requirements in accordance with 240.7, 1 through 3. The purpose of the change, a new section uh, has been accepted by the panel that relocates and renumbers to address the listing of specific uh, components and devices. Now, such as if you look at the illustration to the left, the note one, branch circuit overcurrent devices ahead of conductor shall be listed in accordance with 240.71. And in this uh, note two, relays and circuit breakers providing ground fault protection shall be listed. Uh, if we drop down to the note three, GFCI protection shall be listed uh, in accordance with 240.73 and 210.8, uh, tested by 70E110.10. And basically, this is just, uh, this illustration is dealing with listing requirements, and that's what this illustration is trying to illustrate to the user of the NEC. Now, this illustration deals with selective coordination in accordance with 240.11. Now, this section used to be 240.12 in the 2020 NEC, but the purpose of the change was just mainly to provide a, a requirement, an illustrator requirement, that an upstream overcurrent device will remain closed when a downstream overcurrent device gets into a short circuit or ground fault type condition. And that's what this is illustrating. You notice at the top you have overcurrent device 1 ahead of all of these overcurrent devices and then you drop down and you see that a ground fault in the red occurs on those branch circuits and it opens up and localizes the fault and does not uh, uh, open the upstream overcurrent device. Usually fuses are about uh, five times the rating of anything downstream 
and a circuit breaker is about three and a half times uh, larger than anything downstream, and that's just a, a rule of thumb, but not actually calculated to see if it's absolutely correct. But electricians will use this as a rule of thumb. So you're dealing with overcurrent device one and overcurrent device four, and if four gets into a problem, it will trip and not trip one up above, which is upstream, and that's what this illustration is illustrating. Now this illustration deals with the interrupting ratings in accordance with NEC 240.16. The purpose of this change was to provide a new section, and this section was added to require branch circuit overcurrent protective devices to have an interrupting rating not less than 5,000 amps. Now, uh, reviewing the note Notice it states uh, branch circuit overcurrent devices shall have an IC rating not less than 5,000 amps per 240.16. And then, of course, you have other information in here in black text to illustrate what's going on here. But in the NEC loop for your phases, if you're calculating a branch circuit 210.19A1, A, and B, feeders 215.2A1, a and B. The grounded neutral conductor, you calculate the neutral load by 220.61, the size of the conductor, and then go to your table 250.102C1 and see, based upon the phase conductors, if the grounded conductor is larger than the neutral conductor calculated by 220.61 and use the larger of the two. And of course, your equipment grounding conductor in 250.122B is sized based upon the overcurrent device. And if you had service conductors, you'd look at 230.42A1 to uh, perform your calculations and get the percentage to be used there. And that's what this illustration is illustrating to you. Now, this illustration illustrates accessibility in accordance with NEC 240.24a exception. Purpose of change. An exception has been accepted by the code panel that makes it clear where the exception is used. The general requirements in this section uh, does apply. Now notice the listed industrial hazardous control panel that is illustrated here in accordance with Article 409 and uh, 240.24a exception, we have a person with insulated gloves, insulated tools, removing uh, the uh, panel cover. And so the overcurrent device energized parts and conductors inside the enclosure panel uh, are in compliance with 240.24a uh, exception, and then they're considered readily accessible if you remove the uh, uh, the cover uh, in accordance with 240.24a exception. And that's what this uh, illustration is uh, illustrating to the user of the code uh, when you're dealing with uh, industrial hazardous control panels in a classified area. Now this illustration deals with replacement trip units in accordance with 240.89 an informational note. And the main purpose of the change was to deal with replacement units. And they should be listed in accordance with 110.3b and the manufacturer specifications. Now the note kind of tells it all. Note, replacement trip units shall be listed for use with the circuit breaker type in which it is installed, naturally in accordance with 240.89 and the informational note. Some other information can be uh, looked at and reviewed in 430.52 C3 and C5, approximately on about page 351 of the NEC, if my memory serves me correctly. But that's the main purpose of this illustration. It's just to illustrate the requirements when you're replacing trip units in a, a circuit breaker, as you see in this illustration.